Hi, this is Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I'm going to show you how I made this layout in my latest altered book. Now, this book is very much in progress. I'll show you a little bit about what's going on. I will be altering the cover when I finish the book. I have not started the spread at all. Here I've glued several pages together, and that makes a much stronger, substantial page that will stand up to a lot of gluing and painting and whatnot. Here I have added a pocket by gluing two pages together, and I will be altering this. I have been working on this book for about 10 days, which just shows you how long it, it takes to get this far. This is a layout I have glued down, but I have still got to add color and other embellishments to that. So this is very much in progress as well. Here is another pocket. See where I've glued pages together as well. Uh, I've got a pocket here and all of these pockets will be filled with uh, vintage paper ephemera. But let's work at the layout I showed you earlier. This with the images that I am working with, just the text, would still be a pretty dramatic presentation. It looks good, but I think it could look better. And so here's some of the possibilities I considered. There are lots of ways to cover the blank page. You can add the gesso, as I did here. You can use acrylic paint. You can cover it with tissue paper or mulberry paper other things like this. I really love to use something like this, which is a handwritten letter from 1855. Yes, I do use originals. It's a long story. And so if I was to put this down, there's a lot of layers of, of distress and mystery that's very evocative and I love. So let's see how that looks. That looks good. But I'm not really, it, it just doesn't feel like what I want it to be. And sometimes it just talks to you. And if you do collage and you do painting, you know what I'm talking about. Another thing that I considered was this page, which is from a family Bible, turn of the 20th century. And this was from We Make Your Family Tree. And it has these beautiful floral borders. And I thought very seriously about that one for some coverage. A lot of interest to the eye. So let's see now how that looks with our characters. If I was going to use this, I would use this line as a perch for the bird. It's pretty, but there's too much going on. It's too busy, and you lose the, the powerful effect of this engraving and the gray tone bird. Maybe next time. What I ended up with is actually the cover of an old French bank book. And here are some of the pages that were inside of it. A little bit of stamps there. And you can see that I have already started working into some of these, making another collage. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. So, again, I like this. It's still got some of the stitching in to the the binding, it's very distressed. It's got sepia, some stains, 
handwritten signature, some stamps, it's a beautiful, messy piece of card. You can see where I'm putting it down that there is still some text on either side from the original book. I like that. I think it makes uh, a border and again, some interest to the eye. Now, when we add this engraving, I'd like to show you something. Why am I putting him on the left side of the page? I could put him over here, and that, that's fine, but his gaze is taking us off the page. I don't know where his gaze is taking us. My interest is on this layout, and I want these two pages to hold together as one image altogether. So I want his gaze going into the piece. And I'm going to add this bird. And again, I thought about putting him here. And it looks like he's staring at the man, which tells one story. But if I move him down to the man's eye level, they're staring at each other. And that tells a different story. I've decided not to put the bird strictly on the card. I brought him this way so that his tail is hanging off the edge and it just creates more interest to the eye that way. Now I'm going to go and glue this down. You can use PVA or a craft glue. You can use Mod Podge, wheat paste. I use acrylic gel. For me, I find that a craft glue has too much liquid and creates bubbles and wrinkles. And since I work with a lot of paper, that's that gives me a lot of grief. So I'm going to go take my lift, uh, craft uh, acrylic gel and go off camera and glue these down and be back in a mo. Now I let this dry overnight under some heavy books to make sure that I get a really permanent fast seal. I added an, a little embellishment here. It's a pretty intense layout and I thought it could use a little whimsy and color. And this also picks up the orange red in the stamp here and kind of balances it a little bit. I'm going to show you now what I do to make the elements on a page really pop. And that is I'm going to go around everything with a charcoal pencil and smudge like crazy. Now you can see that I've finished. I've gone around the, the box. I've gone around the bird. I've gone around the turban and the man with the charcoal. And then you can see that I have smudged like crazy using my fingers. Because I want the two pages to hold together as one visual format, I have also gone around the borders with a water-soluble graphite stick. It's a chunky stick. And I'm going to finish it up on this side and see how I've gone round. And now I'm going to, again, smudge and soften, really soften and mess up our frame here.
because again I think that's a little bit heavy color wise I'm going to take a sort of a terracotta colored stick and go into that all the way around you can see it's super inexact science if uh, you're not happy with it, you can always lift up some color or add some more color. It's a great thing about altered books is you can just keep adding into them, gluing, painting, stenciling. And that's pretty subtle, but it is going to give a little bit of a, a rusty color there that actually picks up a little bit of the the fading and the discoloration in the, the page here. So there you have it, the finished altered book layout page. Stay tuned because I'm going to be doing a more layouts in a few days. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I will be happy to help you troubleshoot. See you soon.